When it comes to professional cops who take their work seriously, attacking civilians is the absolute last resort for them. But these next couple of cases prove how a corrupt cop's first step is to attack the civilians. On May 26, 2019, in San Marcos, Texas, officers responded to a distress call about a man who was later identified as John Kelly, a deaf man. He was found on the sidewalk of a road following a 911 call from a neighbor who mistook John's argument with his wife as a domestic disturbance. Officers arrived on the scene and, without taking any of the facts of the situation into account, pulled their tasers out and fired at will. By this point, they had already written John off as some sort of threat, but John was trying his best to tell them he's deaf. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Roll over. Grab his hand. Just... Get, on his, get on your stomach! Uh, Turn around! Uh, Just have him stand up. I think he's cool. Hands. Hands. Let me see your hands. I think he's gonna fall. Hey. John is trying his hardest to get the cops to produce some sort of writing pad so that they can properly communicate. But what John doesn't know is how unprofessional and untrained these officers really are. Instead of trying to figure out and genuinely solve the issue, these mindless pigs just start to shout louder. The officer lets John sit again as he tries his hardest to sign that he cannot speak and that all he wanted was a small notepad. Something that this untrained cop finally understood after John signed it a dozen times. They tried to continue communicating with the paper, but John finds his phone and offers it as a better alternative. He tries to make them aware that he still needs his glasses to do anything, something else they couldn't comprehend. If that wasn't bad enough, these pigs were unable to give John a helping hand in finding his glasses. On top of that, the taser probe is still stuck in his skin, causing discomfort to John, something else these donut munchers didn't care about.
John explains to the officer that he had argued with his wife after which he was walking by the road to cool off when suddenly the police arrived and tased him. Realizing that he wouldn't get any help from the cops, John started to remove the taser probes himself, and as we could see in the video, he was still panting from the pain. Somehow, these heartless cops even justified tasing John, since he had simply walked away despite being called. Keep in mind guys, he's deaf. I believe they're checking with county as well. Which I'm not holding my breath. John continued to explain himself, shocked both literally and figuratively, about why this happened to him as he had not committed any crime or done anything that could lead to this. Thank God, the mindless cops all finally agree on the fact that John is deaf, something that all of them weren't able to get through their heads, despite the confrontation having lasted this long already. Frankly, it seemed that the needless questioning was aimed at finding something that John did wrong, so that they could justify why they tased an innocent deaf man. The cops asked John to get up, which he did, but he was agitated as the cops, despite being entirely wrong, acted as if they were on the right side of the law. Probes were out. Uh, 
trying to. Yeah. I, I know I, I know Alpha Man, so John tried to leave, but now the cops care about him and want him to get checked. After some back and forth, he agreed to let them check him out. They should have thought about this before firing four tasers at him. John asked the EMTs to check him on the sidewalk as he no longer trusted the cops or any other agency after what the cops had just done to him for apparently no reason. The cops gathered around John and the other EMTs with their flashlights desperately trying to be of some assistance. But they should have thought about being helpful like this before pumping John with half a dozen taser probes. John Kelly ended up filing a federal lawsuit against the San Marcos Police Department after the tasing incident. If the last case didn't expose the level of police brutality and carelessness, then this next case is the height of those things exactly. What the cops managed to do in this next video is astounding. Do you have any comment on the actions of Sergeant Brian Fahey? You don't have any comment, sir? You're looking at him right there. On June 2nd, 2024, Sean Paul Reyes, a famous YouTuber with the name Long Island Audit, had the brilliant idea to rent out an LED billboard truck to expose the corrupt and evil Sergeant Brian Fahey of the Connecticut State Police. So we're gonna hang out here, peacefully protest on public property, and hopefully we don't have any issues here, but we just want to expose Sergeant Brian Fahey to the world. We have Fire Sergeant Brian Fahey. It has an LED screen on the back, both sides and in the front. So if you see the other side here, we could just take a look at the video of him assaulting me right where we're standing. And we're here to expose him. The internal affairs cover up everything. Look at this ruthless animal. He said he grabbed my shirt to prevent me from falling backward, that he thought my camera was a firearm. Look at this animal. He's an animal. And then when he got cleared, he did it again. Catches him grabbing my cell phone in his left hand there. Sergeant Brian Faye assaulted a journalist on two separate occasions and internal affairs covered it up. Mr. Reyes, good afternoon, how are you? Hi, how are you? What's sure. your name and badge number, sir? Sergeant Thomas Gorman, badge number 101. Okay. Film out here all day long. Don't care about that. The truck can't park there. No. Why? He put it in a parking spot. Why it's is a fire lane. why is that? It's a fire lane. It's not a fire lane. It is a fire lane. Sir. Last time I was here, Sergeant. I just want to say one thing. Last time I was here, Sergeant, you had a taco truck I got you. I parked got you. right you here have, for the entire lunch. You haven't seen it in a while. Okay. But there's a taco truck that parks there, right there here. There hasn't been quite some time. So you agree that this is not a fire lane because there's nothing no, marking it. This is a fire lane. But there's nothing so marking it as a fire lane. The cops made their first attempt at trying to get Sean to remove his incriminating billboard truck, coming up with the absurd reason that it was some sort of unmarked fire lane. Can you call somebody down from legal? Okay, this is not a fire lane. It is not a fire lane. It is not a fire lane. Although Sean's methods may be different and out of the norm, he still makes a strong impression on everyone in that department and anyone passing by, thus exposing Fahey's reign of tyranny. We asked you to move the truck once. We're asking you a second time. It is a security risk. The truck needs to be moved. I thought it was a fire lane. That is yet to be determined, but I've just been told it is But you were so confident before. I, and I am. You were confident it's a fire lane. Hey, fire marshal's in the way. 
That's his discussion. So you're switching from, him. you're switching from, how is it a security Mr. Reyes, risk? Mr. Reyes. No, I'm asking I, questions. This is my First Amendment right. Okay. We have a right because in this country to protest risk. our gov no, government. You're, you're what is the security too? risk about a, a, a billboard truck, truck? A billboard truck being parked unintended in front of a billboard. It's not unintended. It is unintended. I'm, unintended. I'm right here. There's no driver in it. So, as I said. <laughs> there's no driver in it, really? Correct. Yes, there's no operator in the vehicle. So it's parked. So if he sits in the vehicle, it's fine. It's not a security risk anymore? It's ridiculous. As long as it's here for a brief time frame for delivery, that's fine. Anyways, Mr. Reyes, as I've explained, the truck needs to be removed because it's a security risk. You can park it in a lot in any one of the spots you want. Don't care. That's fine. It cannot remain where it is, or the vehicle will be towed. And I'm letting you know that now. Violating our First Amendment Thank right. Thank you very much, Mr. Reyes. Have a great afternoon. You're from legal, right? Yeah, Mr. Reyes. Hi, how are you? Yes, we met before. Yes, we did mess before. Okay. Can you, you're from legal. I'm trying to understand what about on public property? I'm not blocking anything. This is not a no parking zone. He just, he went from saying it was a fire zone to now it's a security risk. It's kind of ridiculous. This is my first amendment right to protest. Can I speak to somebody above a sergeant and, and they can explain to me what the security risk is? It's kind of unfair that I'm not even being explained what the security risk is other than it's a box truck parked in front and legally parked in front of the Connecticut state. What is can I at least know the security risk? What is the security risk? You saw him come out here. I tried to have a discussion with him like I'm talking to you, sir, and he won't have any discussion with me. I'm trying, he's like, it's a security risk. Move it or else. I'm gonna tow your vehicle. What is the security risk? What is the reasonableness of preventing speech? Because you know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to follow up. You tow my vehicle and you arrest me or whatever you're gonna do, I'm going to follow up and it's gonna be in a court's hands. The cops came back out having completely changed their words from fire lane to a huge security risk. Seemed like nobody could come up with a good enough excuse to legally tow the truck. This whole entire video, uncut, and they will see I never was a threat. This is not in a fire lane, as he lied and said when he first came out here and then came out with a security threat. It's going to seem like, to a court, at least I, in my opinion, my non-legal opinion, seemed like, well, you said it was a fire lane and now you're just making up an excuse as a security threat. That's what I would argue, you're making a security threat issue when you know who it is, you know I'm not a threat to the Connecticut State Police in any way. You all are threats to me. You all are threats to me, and the video proves it. That is, that is a Connecticut State Police officer assaulting me. It seemed that all the Connecticut State Police wanted to do was wipe their hands clean of Sean and just cover their eyes and act blind to the facts. The lengths they go to to protect one of their own. I don't think we are going to disclose what we believe the security risks are when we are being filmed and recorded. I think you would understand why we would want to not broadcast security risks to the public as well as um, I'm sure that's ridiculous. Be an international audience. So that, that would be just a, a media concern that I would have. But so where where time, are you saying you policy what happens about policies okay or procedures you may you're more than welcome to file a FOIA request if you'd like to follow up on your uh internal affairs request you have the information to follow up on that right so, so um, i'm ask, i'm just going to ask you one last question thank you for hearing me out i appreciate it plenty of people can see it plenty of people will see it all the people who so can you so if it's a security risk security here risk. okay listen if it's a security risk here where where is there not a security risk is parking, that fair parking space. There's a park, there's is a that fair so I'm gonna park it right in front, right on the public street, right here. Is that still a security risk to you? I would have to Are you guys far. still would, scared of my box truck? Are you guys defer. still scared of a bill, billboard truck? You're not letting me answer the question. Go ahead. I'm trying to explain. I would have to defer to the operations and the security. I cannot answer that. So well, before I move it, can I know? Is that fair? Now, simply asking the question if the current position of his truck is a risk, then where should he even park? But the legal advisor proved to be useless even with this. They're gonna tow my, my, my property and arrest me if I go across the street. Because if I move there and then I get, I just want clarification. Before I move it, can I get clarification from a law enforcement officer on where exactly they feel safe with my billboard truck? Is that okay? I'll discuss it, but again, I'm not. I'm going to defer to the operational needs. Of right, but I'm just saying where you could defer I, I, to them I, on I where. Can say, I can't tell you. I where. think that's I'm a reasonable you request. Where, right no, now, I'm not saying so. you are going to tell right. me. Obviously, you're you're just saying security reasons, right? But I don't know if it's a security threat right in front, ten feet away. I don't know if it's a security threat. It's not a security threat here, but according to you, in your mind, and so the I'll operation. bring the request in. And um, what well, you know, we, at this point, you have been asked to move the truck, and I think we're all set. <laughs> Ridiculous. While the legal guy tried to figure out where the scared officers inside would feel safe with Sean's truck, Sean takes no risk. I'm moving the truck. Across the street, that's fine. I'm moving I don't the care. truck. The road, just make sure you don't get I can't hear you. Can you tell Faye to keep his hands to himself, please?
Okay. I um, talk to legal and I'm moving the truck okay, to the street. Okay, yeah, and that's fine. It's just don't just don't get in the way of traffic. That's all. Right. Well, there's there's sides of the hey, road. No, I got you. And that's perfectly acceptable. That's fine. Right. So, can you explain to me, Officer Sergeant, what is the security threat? The security I'm going to move is, it. it. It's a security threat to be in front of the building like this. We have a but you have taco have trucks that go inside of the okay. building. So those get pretty clear, okay? But I'm not going to get into that right now with you, okay? It's just it's a security threat to the vehicle needs to move. You're putting the road. That's and I just want to and I just want one thing to clarify one last thing because I'm I told you I'm going to move it yep, under threat. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, if I don't move it, you will tow it. That is correct. You will tow it. Okay, that's all I needed is okay. damages towards, you said that if you if, if I don't move it, you're going to tow it. That's all I need. That is, that is okay, great. Okay. I wouldn't be arrested or anything. Would you arrest no, me? Before Sean moved the truck, though, the attending officer had one more warning for Sean. Sean capitalizes on the moment and gathered hard evidence for his lawsuit later. Fair enough. I don't think it's fair at all, sir. Okay, well, I, I, I can appreciate your opinion on this that. Is, this is free speech. This I, is I free speech. This is the United, United States of America, sir. Right. Thank you, Mr. Ray. You're a disgrace to that badge, sir. You're supposed to uphold the United States Constitution and our constitutional rights, and you're upholding Sergeant Brian Fahey's rights. You're under upholding some fictional security threat that doesn't exist. Shame on you, cowards. After the injustice the department enacted on him, Sean still didn't give up and tried to spread the word about the injustice elsewhere entirely so that the department couldn't complain. We parked very close to the building, but in the back of the building, and it's obviously almost just as close as we were before, but all of a sudden, we're not a security threat anymore? This isn't a security threat? What's the security threat? They could have brought dogs, they could have asked to search the vehicle. I would have, of course, denied that because it's my Fourth Amendment right not to consent to any unreasonable searches or seizures, but there was no investigation work done here, ladies and gentlemen. This is tyranny. This is anti-transparency, anti-accountability, and I expect nothing less from the Corrupticate State Police. The employee entrance and exit. We decided to park the billboard truck, so as they're coming out, it is about 4 o'clock. Sean, with a genius idea, decided to reposition his billboard truck elsewhere, this time deciding on the parking lot spot right in front of the employee entrance. But then, out of nowhere, he spotted the Connecticut State Police Commissioner, Ronald Higgins. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Do you have any comment on the actions of Sergeant Brian Fahey? You don't have any comment, sir? You're looking at him right there. You're part of the command staff. It is saying he wants to change the culture of policing in the Connecticut. Change the culture, Ronald, really? You wouldn't even take my questions. You wouldn't talk to me. You said, have a nice day and drove off in your $100,000 taxpayer-funded SUV you take home and you haven't done anything to rectify the unhinged Sergeant Brian Fahey. Shame on you, Ronald. You gotta do better, you gotta be better for we the people as a public servant, as a leader of the Connecticut State Police Department. Not ignore journalist questions, not ignore egregious criminal unhinged behavior. He made some truly fascinating and deep points about everything wrong with policing and exposed the commonplace issues that societies all over America are suffering from. In that regard, Sean's work is just as important as ever before, as he forced these tyrants to be more accountable and more aware of the rights that a citizen holds over them. He truly showed them what it means to be a red-blooded American. What do you think the consequences should have been for what happened to John Kelly? Let us know in the comments below, and if you liked the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one we have in store for you. Thanks for watching. This is Detective Mystery, signing off.